All right, everybody. I'm Chris. Woo! All right, let's take a look at some exciting list formatting uh, things and stuff. Perfect. Okay, so we head over to our classic uh, uh, Warrior Horses site, and we're definitely not beating a dead horse with this joke. Oh my God, that's hilarious! All right, moving on. All right, uh, what do we got? So the uh, the horses, as we know, they do uh, war's business and business is war, and uh, as a part of that, you know, they manage uh, what they do in the battlefield here in. Office 65, as we all do, right? So if we head over to our targets list, this is a, a list where they're trying to determine, you know, what are the most strategic targets to uh, to attack uh, in the upcoming uh, quarter, all right? So they've got a list for that, and what they've done is they've decided to kind of score these on uh, six different kind of principles um, that make these things more or less attractive uh, to be a target. And so we've got all those numbers. I made them giant just so we could see them, and that's exciting. Uh, just so you're aware, under the hood, I named all of these uh, score one, score two, score three, score four, score five, score six, six um, just to make things easier when I'm writing the format here in a moment. But what would make this easier to read, right? Now, we've only got, uh, what, five items here, but if we had a whole bunch, this gets really hard to determine any kind of value out of this, right? Especially if the uh, scores aren't all even, like I've got them right here for our testing purposes. So... What I wanted to show is how we slap a radar column on here. Oh, just kidding. There is no radar column. Oh, no. I ah, just kidding. It's all a ruse. We're going to make one ourselves. So what I thought would be interesting is if we take a look at what is the process to make a format uh, that's considered a little more advanced. So we would do a dynamic SVG, right? So an SVG is a scalable vector graphics. It's something that is fully supported in list formatting. And by fully supported, I mean... Uh, it's got the bare bones in there, and it's good enough for what we're going to do today. Uh, but what I want to do is kind of clear it up, because sometimes people look at the end result and think that's way too complicated for them to have ever done. So I just wanted to go through uh, an example of how I might create one uh, using some tools, uh, and we'll slap it all together. So uh, let's do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I like to start with my SVGs. You can always download SVGs from a variety of sites. Uh, but for this one, I'm just going to draw it in a free tool called Inkscape. So this is an open source tool here. And then if you're not aware, SVGs are just XML uh, documents right here uh, like this. So I've gone ahead and just saved this blank SVG over here so we can see what is being output. Okay, so let's take a look here. So if we wanna create a radar chart where I wanna plot all six of those uh, scores, uh, I need to create a polygon. So we'll create a polygon. I've got my six corners already selected. Here, and I'm just gonna drag one of these out. That sounds, ooh, let's create it as, as horizontal as possible. I'm just gonna use the uh, the bottom there to, that is so beautiful, perfect, okay. So now I'm just gonna take this giant thing I just made, uh, right, and we're gonna go over here and we're going to, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, if I've already done it, but very important for this is we go to your preferences and we're gonna make sure we go to our input output and we want our SVG output and we wanna make our pass string format absolute. Uh, that'll make more sense here in a little bit, but just keep that in mind before I forget to tell you that. There you go. All right, so now we've got a exciting, uh, I don't know what you call it, a stop sign type shape. Yeah, hexagon, that's the one. All right, so we've got one of those, and we want to put this kind of in the middle. Uh, so what we can do is we can come to our Align and Distribute menu right there. Uh, we're just going to hit relative to the page, and boom, 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 we'll put it right in the middle. So let's make this a little bigger. We don't need to see that. It's the XML right now. I'm going to copy this thing because I want a few more of these. All right, so I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste it. It goes there. I'm going to center that one too. Boom, boom. All right, and then I'm going to scale that one. You notice I don't have any fill, and I've just got the stroke. That's kind of the default in here. Um, if yours is not the default, you'll just want to pick that. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to transform. So I go to my object, and I go to transform so I can get this, and I can scale it. And for this, we're just going to, and again, this part is less important, but I think it's good to see. Uh, let's scale that proportionally. All right, and apply that. So now we've got a smaller one, and let's paste another one on there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, scale this one to 50%. All right, so we'll apply that, and let's uh, align that one as well. Boom, boom, boom. Woo. And then we come back over here, and let's do one more just for fun. All right, and we'll put this one at 25%, right? You could vary this. This is just for uh, what we're trying to do. Let's go back over here, and let's center that one as well. So, wow, wow, wow. Okay, so we've got this, that's great. Um, and if we were to save this, let's go ahead and save that and let's get that back to that side view where we can really uh, see what's happening here. Uh, now we can see we've got these complicated paths that got added, one for each of those shapes. They've got these transforms in them, all this extra junk we don't care about, and they're all grouped here. Uh, 
And I mentioned earlier that while we've got SVG support, it's a bit bare bones. And so one of the things we want to make sure is we're always using paths. So if you end up using an object, like we add labels to our chart, which we're not going to do for time here, uh, you'd want to convert those uh, into a path and so on. Uh, but then the other thing is we don't we don't have any support for transforms. So we want to get rid of those and get rid of these groupings. So let's do it. So the easiest way to do that is I'm going to select everything. And I have an extension, which I'll link to at the end here, which you can install in here, modify path, apply transform. And all that's going to do is going to go through those paths and ignore that. And that's an exciting error. Um, and it's going to remove those transforms. So when I save this, right now, you just see we just simplified that. Uh, dramatically, these are now drawn absolutely. So these are the points we want to draw our shape in. Woo, and don't worry if that uh, doesn't make any sense. We're just going to cut and paste those things. So yay. All right, so now we've got that there. Now the last thing I'm going to do is remove this grouping. So we can do that by editing the XML structure. Um, so we expand that group. Whoop. And we're just going to make this uh, window a little bigger. There we go. All right, and we're just going to move each of those out. Get out of there. What are you doing? That's just silly. All right. There we go, get rid of that and we'll kill that guy. And if we save that, now we see, boom, now we've got rid of that group. That's great. And the last thing we want to do is make sure that this thing is centered correctly. So we're going to go to document properties and we're going to say resize the content. All right, that's going to make that whole document that way. That's going to make our view box uh, the way we want. And we're going to save that. Now, if we wanted to go a little simpler here, right, we can go up here, we can use save as, and we're going to choose instead of an Inkscape, we're going to choose a uh, not optimized because that's going to get rid of our absolute paths. We're going to plain. We're going to hit save, and yeah, replace that sucker. Boom! All right, so now we've got an even simpler SVG, right, that describes this. Okay, so now we get rid of Inkscape. Bye. We don't need you right now. Uh, what we're going to do is we want to use this. Now this is not a JSON format, so how am I supposed to make it work magically? All right. Well, good news, we have an exciting tool over here. Uh, if we head over to aka.ms/list-formatting. Uh, we end up at this beautiful site. And at the very bottom here, we've got this tools link. If you click that, we have this kind of hidden tool, HTML to formatter. This allows you to paste HTML or CSS and both, and I'll put that as JSON. Now, you you can't always just take it directly, right? But it gets you a lot of the way there, which is awesome. So if I grab this guy, all right, let's copy that sucker. Boom, and paste it over here in the HTML. And then we're gonna hit run, all right? And that's gonna, generate is basically going to map all of these things into the uh, special syntax we need. We're going to hit copy on that. And let's head back over here. So now well, let's just go ahead and apply it to this column for funsies. All right, advanced mode. And let's make that a little bigger. All right, let's paste that in and preview that. Ooh, we got an SVG that's starting to show up. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. Now there's some extra stuff here we don't want. We're just going to get rid of, like for instance, we don't want debug mode. That always gets added with the uh, the tool. And I don't want any of these styles that got added to the individual paths. I'm going to get rid of all those. Bye bye. See ya. And this is why we didn't really care about the stroke color or the stroke width because we were just going to take them away. And if we preview that, now what have I done? Right? Don't worry. Uh, what we've basically done is we've taken a default fill. And so let's get rid of that. So let's add a style to our SVG, right? So it's that a style. Oh, let's be careful where we hit our tabs. Hit enter, all right? And we're going to hit uh, fill. In this case, we just want a transparent, right? And then we want a stroke color, right? And unsurprisingly, we call that stroke. All right, and we're going to call this. So if we just said red, right? We can see there we have a red stroke. That's exciting. But we could go even better. Or if we say this magic phrase of current color with a capital C, a lowercase c and a capital C, then we can pick up whatever we have as the font color, right? So that means that we can use cool things like attributes. Oh gosh, we cancel there. And we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna type in class and we're gonna do something fancy like MS font color neutral primary, right? So that way we're using a theme color and we do that because we're using current color, it gets picked up, boom, boom, boom. That's exciting. You know, we can change the size of this thing, right? So we could say uh, width on this is, we're just gonna make it huge so we can see it, 400 pixels. And we're gonna say our height is also 400 pixels. Ooh, got extra colons everywhere, colon city. All right, <laughs> that means, now, Ed, that made the uh, the whole box bigger, but it didn't actually change the scaling, right? And that's where we're going to want to use something called the view box. So you add it to our attributes here, view box. And for this value, this is what's going to do some magic scaling for us. So if we just head back over here, all right, we just grab it right out of there. We just need that view box exactly as Inkscape made it for us. Boom. And we'll put it in there, view box, and we preview that. 
now it scales appropriately. And let's just scroll that over. And I made that huge, didn't I? That's cool. All right. So now we've got this. Wow, we drew an SVG. And if that's all you wanted to do, mission accomplished, right? Uh, but if we want to make this thing dynamic, which we definitely do, that's what we're going to look at now. All right. So the idea is these values should map right on here. Um, and to make that a little easier, now this one's only got these few lines, so this is fairly okay to, to see. One thing I like to do though, especially when working in any kind of format that gets complicated or lots of children, um, is I like to add comments. Now your first, you might look at that and go, a comment, oh my goodness, how is that possible? Well, the, the way it's possible is any property that doesn't actually use is just ignored. So you can add anything, you can call it whatever you want. I called it comment, uh, just make it obvious what I'm doing, but you don't have to call it comment, you can call it uh, Toby's special notes. I mean, even if your name's not Toby, that's totally a possibility for you. All right, so we'll say ring three, ring two, ring one, and we'll say the inner ring, ring is zero, right? So that's where we want our values. These are values from zero to three, and so that's how we want to plot those. So that makes that a lot easier to kind of figure out where we are in things. Again, just to prove it doesn't change anything, doesn't break a thing. Now let's add our dynamic one. All right, here we go. Oh, man, I'm almost out of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this very, very quickly, and then we're uh, going to move on from there. So the idea is if I were to paste this, right, and I call this uh, scores, we'll move on. I can make this into an expression. I just put an equals, and then I start building this as a string. So really, I'm just going to be building this by string concatenation. And then I can do a series of if statements and copy each one of these individual coordinates down. Now, again, I'm out of time, so I am just going to jump ahead and grab one that I already did uh, instead of making you watch me cut and paste everything. Paste, and let's preview that. Okay, so what we did was that thing is we wrote a series of if statements, and what you didn't really get to see is if you use the uh, the control F here, you could help yourself by highlighting things, right? So everywhere you need to see something, right, is greater than or equal to three. Uh, you can use that, and that can be really, really helpful in sorting through what gets to be a lot of text on the screen. Okay, so there we go. Now we have this, and it previews that. So now we have this exciting thing here, and let's save. Now, one of the things I didn't mention is that these formats actually randomize when you click on them. That's a, so I can randomize the values here, so you can, just so you can see the uh, uh, that it is drawing it dynamically, right? So that's pretty cool. So the idea is we took it from Inkscape, we ran it through our HTML to formatter to, to make that easier as a format, and then we customized it by just doing simple string manipulation. And uh, one other thing I'll mention here, we don't have time for it, but I will show you that this could be done the exact same type of thing in Power Apps. So I have a component here, and you can see I've just got the SVG, and I'm doing with switch statements here. Uh, but we're doing the exact same thing, and that allows us to have a component that's dynamic, right? It has its own properties here, right? so we can say this is a one instead, and it'll redraw here in Power Apps as well. So you can see the same principles all over the place. It's very exciting. All right, let's wrap it up with some slides. All right, prepare an SVG. Use that absolute path. Make sure you use Vuebox. Only paths, so all the other fancy stuff like text or circles, all that needs to be converted to paths before you import it into the list formatting. Uh, again, using a tool like Inkscape that's pretty straightforward and use that fancy current color. And there is the tool I use. Those are the tools, very exciting. Feel free to add those comments. Any extra properties are ignored. So it doesn't have to just be comments. So if you're just trying to track like, hey, this is that, even if it's just while you're doing the, uh, the development of the format, I find that extremely helpful. Um, because uh, if I look at it a week later, I won't remember what that is either. All right, so finally, here is the links. Uh, so this is the link to Inkscape if you want to download it. Again, it's free, it's open source. Here's an extension. You literally just download two files and put them in your, uh, your app data folder. And there you go. That's it for me, woo! Awesome, thank you, Chris. Always entertaining, a jam-packed shortened session, but we appreciate it, uh, giving us everything from, yep. <laughs> 